Welcome back to Rainmaker University. This is modular number four already. It's so amazing how this has just progressed and the RAIN 2.0 concept is unfolding every time we come back and have a chance to spend time with you guys. And so today we're going to be talking about creating recruiting momentum. You know, what does it take to become a market leader? What does it take to be able to create the kind of momentum that you want for your business. And so we're going to be talking about all the different phases of it, principles, and then some really important implementation to help you really ramp it up. So with that, Randy, over to you. My illustrious partner, Mr. Randy Gage, is going to be talking about the principles for successful duplication. Over to you, Randy. The big thing is the small thing. And the small thing is the big thing. Breaking news. Let me tell you the kind of calls you're going to get every month for the rest of your career. Some new person's going to call you and they have just joined the business and they have figured out exactly how to shortcut their way to success. And they realize you don't know this because you're old fashioned and your whatever, <laughs> and they're going to call you and say, I found the secret. I know a guy, he mows the lawn of the lady who walks the dog for the guy who fixes Lady Gaga's refrigerator. And he could sponsor Lady Gaga, and she has 80 billion followers on Instagram, and um, she could sponsor... I can go triple black rain diamond in a week. And you got to explain to them, you know what? That's the big thing. But no, Lady Gaga really is probably not going to do that. And yes, I know you uh, know the guy who cuts the hair of the lady who lives next door to the blah, 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 who met Dwayne Johnson at a uh, event one time. But Dwayne makes $60 million a movie. He's not going to be that enamored with how he could make uh, $20,000 a month or $100,000 a month with rain. And you could spend years for that. People are going to come to you and they know the guy who does procurement for the Navy. And if we could get every sailor in the Navy um, squaffing down a, uh, a you know gel pack every day, it'd be built. But that would take five years and go through a bidding process. And, and then how would it duplicate? So why we say the big thing, the little thing, and the little thing is the big thing is because sponsor a single mom who wants to create some residual income. Find a school teacher who needs a second income. Find a, a Generation Z person who likes to do side gigs and let them plug into the system and that can turn into an organization of 20,000 people. The small thing can actually be the big thing because it's not about what works. It's about what duplicates. We could take a commercial on the Super Bowl here or the World Cup over in Europe or LATAM and sponsor 20,000 people in a day. But how many of those 20,000 people would have three or four million dollars to buy a commercial? And then they're going to have to wait till the next one a year later or four years later. It works, but it doesn't duplicate. Uh, we got to focus on the fundamentals. We've got to focus on the 90%, not the 10%. What do I mean by that? Well, 10% of the population, they're sales types. They know how to sell. They love to sell. They know all the closing techniques. They've studied neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, they can overcome any objection and they have no fear of rejection. They love rejection. They say, I, I just got another no. I can't wait because every time I get nine no's, I get a yes. That's 10% of the population. The other percent of the population is like me. They don't know how to sell. They don't want to know how to sell, and they're definitely afraid of rejection. So make your approach why we've built out the system the way we have, why the tools are designed the way they are, 
why we say use the tools instead of your personality, because then it works for the 90%. And if you want to build a team of 10,000 people or bigger, what's a better market to draw from? 10% of the population or 90% of the population? And kind of to wrap up the principles, the last one I would say is open people, don't close them. When you close them with some convincing closing technique, those are the people that get the first order and it sits in their closet for five months and then they're selling it on eBay and they drop out. When you open people, when you give them the information they need to write, to, you know, to make the best decision for them, those are the people that stick around, they replicate and you create, you create a great team. A big part of this process um, is who do you approach? Who is the target demographic? Who's the best candidates to talk to? And Anne, I know you have some great insights on that. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, this is these are principles that I've used the entire time working in this profession. And that is, you know, you open it and offer it to everyone. But at the same time, you're looking for the motivated people in your life, the people who have a certain talent and skill set that maybe you don't have so that you can create a board of directors and leverage. And I love that word leverage, Randy, where you're leveraging other people's influence, other people's uh, talents, skills, locations, you know, all those wonderful things that are demographics that are going to create your board of directors. You know, I always look at it as, you know, sitting at a big table, you get to sit, you're CEO of your own business, and you get to create that board of directors. Who are the sharpest, most ambitious people that you know? And like Randy said, it could be that single mom. You know, we know lots of single moms that have a hunger and a desire to build the business. I know lots of teachers, having been a former teacher, that would love to be able to work together and lock arms with a system and with the tools that we have, because this is a teaching business. You know, as Randy said, it's more of a teaching business than it is a sales business. And so when you start thinking about who do you know that speaks a language in a country that Rain is open in? Who do you know in that country, you know, that you could tap into, show them the tools and build? Who do you know in your local market that has skill sets and talents that you could wrap your arms together and create a team of people that would really, you know, plant the flag in your market. So think about that, guys. It's really about, you know, looking at the most talented people you know, and the most motivated you people, people that you know, the hungriest people that you know, and giving them the opportunity to look at what we have here with Rain. So you're looking at motivated people, and you're also looking at, let's look at some of the demographics in terms of age. Okay. The Z millennials, as Randy likes to refer to them, <laughs> are the younger people. Okay. Because we want to create the stability of having a long-term business. And the way we do that is by looking at, you know, having a diversity in terms of age, in terms of ethnic backgrounds, in terms of, you know, all kinds of skill sets, men, women, and so forth. But don't forget the age parameter parameters too, okay? Because guys, that will end up giving you a longer longevity to your business. So Randy, talk a little bit about the best places to find the best candidates. Yeah, so think about what Ann just shared with you the most busy, most ambitious, most successful people. It will shock you until you've been in the business a while, and then it won't shock you at all. You know, when you when you approach somebody who works a full-time job, they're a, you know, a minister or a deacon or something in their church, and they go uh, one night a week to the church and Sunday all day, and they have some other committee projects, and then they do some charity work, and they deliver pizzas one night a week, or they have some kind of side gig selling something on uh, uh, Alibaba or eBay. They always find time for your presentation. Your brother-in-law, who's been unemployed for six years because nobody wants to hire a convicted felon, pedophile, axe murderer, 
Um, he never has time to watch your presentation because he's watching Judge Judy and then um, Divorce Court and then Storage Locker Wars and then Tow Truck Company Wars. And I mean, it's so crazy. The busiest people find time to look at this and then the busiest people find time to do this. So the more successful they are in something else, the more successful they'll be in our business. So you're not going to meet them at nightclubs and Reddit chats where people are way in the latest conspiracy theories and the political diatribes where this group is shouting against that group. That's not the consciousness that you want to look for. Uh, find people who are uh, doing positive things. They're going to courses. They're taking continuing education courses at college. They're learning a second language. Uh, on, could be like I do the Duolingo mo mobile app to work on Spanish and French. Find people studying any language. If they're studying any language, they're a good candidate. If they're taking any kind of a continuing education course, they're great candidates. There are some churches like Science of Mind and Unity that kind of have a culture of a lot of classes. There's yoga on Monday nights and uh, basket weaving on Tuesday nights and prosperity on Wednesday night and uh, Pilates on Thursday night. And just anyone who's taken something for personal growth, self-development, great candidates. Self-development seminars come to town. Uh, entrepreneurial seminars come to town. When you, there's a seminar on how to invest in real estate, how to plan your financial future. Man, you should be there with your shaker bottle on the table in front of you, learning whatever great knowledge they're teaching in the room. And at the same point, meeting people who are working on themselves, who are working on a better life. Um, the other thing that I kind of the secret weapon is uh, shared experiences. Uh, if you're an introvert like I am, and I am a, a crazy introvert, which some of you are going to be shocked because you say, come on, he does videos. I've seen him on stage in front of 10,000 people. There's a lot of people like me that we we have no, no fear at all about being on a stage of 10,000 people because we own that stage, we control that. But put me in an elevator with somebody who wants to do small talk, invite me to a cocktail party or a networking event where I don't know people, my palms are sweating. I'm just, but that's not my thing, right? But what I learned that, like I say, I think this is really a secret weapon, is when you're in a shared experience with people, there is no um, pressure or stress about meeting people because you talk about the experience. If you're there in line to get into the Taylor Swift concert with your two daughters, and there's another parent in line in front of you and another parent in line with their kids behind you, you're probably gonna have a conversation. If you're pushing a baby stroller down the street and somebody's pushing one the other way, I guarantee you, you're gonna talk. If you're out there walking your dog at 6 a.m., somebody else is walking their dog at 6 a.m., I promise you're going to talk. For me, I've made literally millions of dollars in bonuses because I love to play softball. And I met a bunch of guys that I didn't know when I joined a softball league. And I met all those guys at the league. And then I went on tournaments and met people in other cities. And then we went to the World Series and I met yet more people. and it was literally millions of dollars in commission for me. Um, the same is true of the fact that I went to a particular church and I met people there. Shared experience. So even though I was really nervous driving up to that first softball game when I joined the league, as soon as I got there, everybody was getting ready, stretching and throwing and warming up. And so you're just doing that. There's no pressure. And you're in the game and you kind of find out, okay, Jim is number 12 and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jason is number 10 and you're trying to remember everybody's name might take you a couple of weeks, but there's no awkward. How do you do? What do you do? You know, all the small talk because you're just in the game. Uh, same thing. If you're in line at the new 
Marvel uh, superhero movie for the preview on Thursday at midnight. Who else is going to be there? The other sci-fi geeks who would go out at midnight to see a movie. It's a shared experience. Conversation is going to happen. Uh, the favorite place for me, by the way, that has been my secret weapon is uh, the brushless car wash where you go and they wash your car by hand because you know who goes there people with good cars and you know what people with good cars are they're successful people and you all drop your car off and then you go to the waiting area and you're waiting for your car and you see other people's car and they see you and sometimes you talk about cars or just conversation happens man aren't they slow today wow they're really fast today it's a shared experience. So it, it, it creates conversation. So really just go out there and meet people living your life. And when we talk about the candidate list, we talk about how it's organic, it should be living, breathing, growing all the time. Uh, and really important to understand this, the same principles are true online. So with social media, great place to meet people. But if you just get an Instagram post and you just start pitching uh, product posts five times a day, pitching income opportunity five times a day, everybody's just going to block you, unfollow you, want to run away from you. You want to do online because that's the equivalent. If you, let's say you join a, a so you're, you love tennis and you see there's a tennis group on Facebook. So you apply and they accept you in the tennis group. And you join, and the first thing you say is, well, I know everybody here plays tennis, and you know, to be a good athlete, you want to have good nutrition. I happen to represent rain products, and they come from seeds, and they're 20 to 30 time, times more powerful than uh, the fruits or vegetables they grow into. And people are like, well, who is this jerk? I just met him 20 seconds ago, and he's already pitching me. It'd be the same if you walked into the supermarket and saw somebody in the produce section. He said, you're buying that grapefruit? Do you realize if you ate that grapefruit seed, it's 20 to 30 times more powerful than the grapefruit itself? And I could give you a product. They'd be like, who is this creep? Why are they bothering me? It's rude. It's obnoxious. It puts people off. Whereas when we just go out and we live life and meet people, and be friendly and develop relationships and we learn about them and they learn about us. We like them and they like us. Then you can approach them with how it's appropriate. So online or offline, same thing. Just make that, uh, you know, your candidate list organic and, and, and bring it up in the right time and context and use the tools that Rain has created for you. So um, big part of the process is, and this is something you wanna really work with on your new people when you're going through the new partner orientation, and that is the step of inviting. Because of all these skill sets, I think inviting is the money skill set. It's the one that will make you the most money when you get good at it. So and you're an expert at invitations and doing them in a compelling way. Would you share some thoughts on that, please? You know, it's interesting. You mentioned the whole idea of ed a continuing education and so forth. That's actually how I found out about this profession of network marketing. I've been looking for a business for six months. I go to this course, this real estate course, because I'm looking at, you know, different options. And I'm sitting next to this guy and he has these little nutritional packets with them. And of course we get into conversation exactly what Randy's talking about. And I realized, oh my gosh, this is what I was looking for. And I didn't know about it. Well, he's in New York area at that point. I was in that area as well living. And of course he invites me to come to a presentation. So guys, you have to realize that somebody is going to invite everybody, you know, to a presentation, to take a look. They're going to take a look at either at your business or they're going to take a look at somebody else's business. So the idea is, is that you want to create a compelling invitation. OK, something that captures their attention, captures their imagination, gets them thinking about a vision 
okay? The things that you are excited about, why you're excited about it, but you've got to get to the point right from the start, okay? You can't be a matter of, you know, the friend zone. I mean, that's where I find that a lot of people end up, you know, not knowing which direction to go because they've been in such a friend zone with someone, they don't know how to cross the bridge over. So that's the reason that we put specific skill set teachings, mastering this skill of compelling invitations in the new partner orientation. And it's all laid out for you guys, because I believe that that is the most important skill set to start, to really learn how and to become a master at it, because it is the money skill, as Randy referred to it. So first off, you want to get to the point, you know, and a lot of times when you're in conversation with someone, or it could be a text message, it could be a live call as well, or it could be a, you know, phone call, or it could be a, a sitting with someone. And the idea is you want to throw that in there by saying something like, hey, I want to talk to you about a new project that I'm working on, an exciting project that I'm working on. But before we get into that, how are the kids? Okay, so now what you've done is you've actually given them an understanding of what you want to talk about. So, you know, you're being honest about it as opposed to, you know, flying in like Randy says into conversations where people look at you like you've got two heads, you know, and commission breath and everybody backs up. Everybody has a cousin like that, okay, walks in the room and everybody backs up. You don't want to be one of those people, but you want to get to the point and treat people with a respect of their time and their thought. And then you can say something along the lines, like we point out in the script. And I thought of you because, and you give them a genuine compliment. I mean, I remember talking to a very good friend of mine who happens to be a, a grandmaster in Taekwondo. Okay, of course, I thought of you because you and I've always wanted to do a business together. And this could be a great project because of your interest in nutrition, you know, the highest form of nutrition. And, you know, we get into a conversation about it. And then, you know, obviously I want him to then see one of our first tools, which is the seeds for prosperity tool so that they can get an understanding of what it's about, get back to you right away. So what you want to do is say something along the lines of, if I would you take a look at a two minute video, this, this might be for you, might not be for you. Okay. Either way is fine. So you relieve some of the pressure. But then you want to come back in and highlight why this is so exciting, you know, and I might say something like, guys, this is like <laughs> Star Wars, Star Trek meets James Bond. Now, who wouldn't want to see a video that looks like that? And if you've watched the Seeds for Prosperity, you know, it's an exciting video. Okay, in two and a half minutes, I mean, pow, it gives you enough information to say this is different. This is unique. And doomsday vault. Oh my gosh. I mean, even when Randy and I uh, first saw that, that incredible article in, in Time Magazine, I mean, I said to him, he said to me at the same time, we sent a message like this. Did you see that article in Time's, Time Magazine? And the, the, the text message went like this because it was so exciting. So guys, what I'm saying is, is that if, you, if I would you and you, you want to highlight the excitement there. So they're excited to go watch it. And then you want to set up, obviously, the follow-up right there in that conversation. Take a look at this. Call me back as soon as you watch it. Okay. So they call you back. Obviously, you want to give them the vision. You know, Randy, I'd love to do this business with you. We have so much fun. We could travel the world. We could go and hit all the different markets that you and I have friends in. I mean, let's make this happen. It's going to be amazing. Take a look. And then and obviously, I also want to make sure that anybody that I speak to, I give them a copy of, oh, I just thought I had it. Yep, here it is. The Ultimate Lifestyle Booklet. Guys, this is so gorgeous. I mean, this to me looks like a travel magazine. Okay, all about the ultimate lifestyle business. And it highlights all of the benefits that somebody, you know, who's looking for a business as hungry as I was looking for a business for six months. Okay, had I been given a magazine like this, I would have been hallucinating, as Randy says, <laughs> over this. I would have lost sleep. Okay, guys, so we want to be able to incorporate your personality, your excitement, languaging it right. We have it all written out in the script and the NPO, and then having the tools, video tools, and the beautiful brochure here to help support that. 
compelling invitation so that they will come back to you and say, I want to know more. So now you've invited them to take a look at the information, videos, whatever, and ultimately you want to invite them to come to a presentation. I was dazzled the first time I walked into a live presentation because to me it was meeting all the people involved, you know, hearing the people talk first firsthand about it, hearing the excitement, the testimonials, you know, understanding more about the products and the and how the business works. This is all part of that. But the beautiful thing of what we're teaching here with Rain 2.0 is that there is a meeting before a meeting and there's a meeting after the meeting. And guys, if you follow along with us on these two concepts, you're going to see how this is going to make you stand out from all the others out there because you're going to show them how to warmly welcome them into the culture that we have here with Rain 2.0. So Randy, talk a little bit about the meeting before the meeting. So here's the problem, people. To have a meeting before the meeting and a meeting after the meeting, you have to have a meeting. <laughs> so I cannot stress this enough. It's 2023. We're almost done. We're recording this for, I think, November 2023. December. Uh, December 2023, um, you got to get back in the real world. you got to get out of the Zoom rooms. And that means regular Be the Breakthrough Opportunity presentations and regular leadership academies in your market. Now, I know what you're thinking. You say, yeah, but most you know people in my area, they don't like to go to me. That's an excuse. It's not true. If you want to build, if you want to be a market leader, you got to do events. Well, people don't like to do events in their home because there's not. I done. I can't tell you how many meetings I've done in trailer parks and uh, mobile homes and places like that. Um, people in my first thing was in an efficiency apartment uh, with people sitting on the floor, um, and that's what you say in the intro. That hey, I'm sorry we're all so crammed in here, but that's why I invited you tonight. I'm just launching a brand new business. And one of my dreams is to get my dream home. And this business is what I chose to do it. And that's what we're going to hear about tonight. And everybody can appreciate that. Um, so you, if you want to be serious, I just have to say this over and over. And Anne is going to say it over and over. And you're going to hear it from the diamonds, which is, no, what are you doing in your market? Are you Do you have regular Be the Breakthrough presentations and regular leadership academies? So the... Be the breakthrough one is the first, obviously, the whole presentation. And then the leadership academies for second look or third look or even fourth look. Um, but let's talk about this meeting before the meeting of the be the breakthrough or the what we say, you know, the opportunity presentation. There's three things that you can do before the meeting that really make a difference. The first is to introduce your candidate to the important people in the room. Who are the important people in the room? The top ranked distributors, because they're going to be able to help you later with answering questions and giving credibility and providing social proof. You want to introduce them to anyone who's going to be presenting that night, because then instead of them seeing some stranger at the front of the room that they think is trying to sell them, now it's their new friend that they met and they're going to pay much more attention. They're going to be much more receptive. Again, look for people who share their situation. If they're a hairstylist and there's another hairstylist in the room, introduce them. They're going to say, wow, this must be good for people who are hairstylists. If they're a softball player and there's other, introduce them. If there's Jewish, there's other Jewish people. If they're uh, senior citizens and there's other senior citizens, if they're golfers and there's other golfers, anything that's share in common because they just say, oh, you know, he's a truck driver and I'm a truck driver. This must be a good business for people who are truck drivers. So that's the first thing. The second thing is create expectations. I always like to create an expectation in their mind. Something like this. Hey, Ann, I know you're a school teacher. I think you'll be amazing in this business because it's a teaching and training business. Hey, Jeff, I know you're a football coach. 
I think you're going to love what you see tonight. And I think you can crush it because you're such a good coach. And this is actually a coaching business. And the better you are at coaching people, the better you can be in this business. So you've created an expectation. And finally, the third thing is let them know that you're going to meet with them afterward. We call it the circle up, and Ann's going to explain it in a second. Um, but you're just letting them know, hey, after the presentation, I'm going to come and get you. We're going to take our chairs over in that corner over there. And I have some uh, information and samples I'm going to send you home with. I want to get any of your questions answered. So I'll be coming in and meet there. So you set that up. That's another one of the expectations you're creating. Then the meeting's going to happen. They're going to see this great, amazing, standardized presentation. And then is going to be the meeting after the meeting. You know, it's interesting. When <laughs> I remember one of the first meetings I went to, and I took my father with me, and he walked in to a live event. And he saw people he knew from the neighborhood, from different activities that he was involved in locally. I mean, he saw lawyers, he saw accountants. He said to me at that point, recognizing this must be a really legitimate <clears throat> business opportunity because all these other people were involved. <clears throat> Guys, he would not have seen that or felt that or experienced that had he not come to a live event. So that's why Randy and I really believe that there's such a dynamic in the live event. And that circling up afterwards is a great way to say, okay, they bring those people together that you've invited. And the first thing I like to say is what impressed you the most from what you've seen so far? So now I know what their interests are. You will too. Are they interested in learning more about the products? Are they interested in learning more about the business? Are they interested in learning more? What are their questions? You know, we really wanna give them an opportunity to get their questions answered to make them feel comfortable about, you know, making a decision, coming to a logical conclusion. And then obviously that's first and foremost. Secondly, if there are any questions or, or needs to have to be addressed, then you want to be able to address it right away so that they can go away with a, an understanding that they are a, they're interested in the business. They're interested in the products. They want to get enrolled. You get them enrolled for that, that evening. And you want to give them the first step. And that is, you know, getting them started with their new partner orientation, because you want to start to set up the process with them. You want to set up, as Randy said, the expectations. They're going to go through this booklet. You want to set them up and show them how they can set up the first 25 names in their list so they can start making calls. And you can go over this with them, set a time to go over it with them after they've reviewed it, after they've written up the information about what are their vision, what their goals, you know, what are their, what are their health goals and financial goals so that you have something to talk to them about. And then to help them set up their grand opening, of course, and also, you know, getting them into what we call, you know, talk major blast and getting it out there to get the message out there so they can have more people and create a RAIN partner team. That's the whole process here, guys, is to help them get their business up and running so they can have a RAIN partner team come out of this. Now, at the same time, you have people that are there that are interested, they want to know more, and you want to be able to give them brochures and literature, okay, and samples. So you need to have these packets ready for all the candidates that you're bringing to the event, okay? You want to make sure that you have the uh, ultimate lifestyle booklet. You want to make sure you have how to make it rain because this is going to give them an overview of the comp, comp plan bonuses. Simple, easy for them to understand and some samples. Okay, that's that's part of what we do here in our business. We're promoting the business through having the tools and having the samples. And of course, if there's somebody there with a you know that negative Nelly look on their face, We've all had those, believe me, both Randy and I have had those people, you know, with the lemon face, I call them, you know, at that point, I want to put my arm as soon as I see that around them and get them up. If they don't have any questions, you can feel their energy is not great. Give them a, a packet, get them out of the room <laughs> and send them on their way because you don't need that energy in your circle up afterwards. You want to be focusing on the people that have that spark in their eyes. You know, I can remember sitting there. I had sparks flying out of my eyes. I was so excited. I felt like I had found the place 
that I wanted to be with my professional you know, career and going into this profession. So guys, that's what you're looking for. And that's why the circle up is so important so that you can help them come to that logical conclusion. So Randy, talk a little bit about maximizing your recruiting results. I know this is really, really important. Yeah, because guys, remember, the focus of this module is creating momentum in recruiting. And to create momentum in anything in our business is really about building the right culture. And beginners and people who struggle in the business, the people are always, we call them grinders because they're always grinding and grinding and they never really seem to get much traction. They don't get true duplication. They, everything, they have to do everything in their team. That's because they're trying tactics and hacks and they're buying, you know, $29 ebooks on how to recruit from home in your bunny slippers. And what's the hack for doing that? Instead of just doing the fundamental stuff, doing the foundational stuff and building culture, leaders, people with true duplication, they build culture. So one of the areas that's most important for the context of what we're talking about today is creating a culture of active recruiting. Here's the difference. Active recruiting is when you've trained your people with the new partner orientation, going through their calendar with them and making sure that they have literally blocked off a portion of every week for inviting. So some of that will be with text, and WhatsApp, some may be on social media, some is handing out and leaving ultimate lifestyle booklets around town in places where people are going to find them. Some of them is calling them, sending them a text or a WhatsApp. Hey, I want to chat with you. You got two minutes, we can chat. And then you might call them, if I would you, that Ann talked about. Hey, if I sent you a link to a three-minute video, would you watch it and call me as soon as you're done? You got to block that off. 40 minutes, 60 minutes every week. That's the difference. Most people are waiting for candidates to beg them for a presentation, right? You're talking to your friend, and, oh my God, every day at three in the afternoon, I'm so sleepy. My head is laying on my desk in my cubicle. I got to go down and get a couple uh, cappuccinos Boom, you get all excited and you tell them about rain and seed source nutrition. and But that's not active recruiting. That's passive recruiting. You waited for that person to bring it up. Just it would be the same. You're out to dinner with friends and somebody's talking about uh, what a dead end job they have. And they just had their performance review and they didn't get a raise and they hate their boss. Well, you get all excited. You tell them about rain. OK, great. But that's still passive recruiting culture because they begged you to approach them. What you want to set for the culture is what you want to set for the behavior for yourself is that literally every week there's a block of time for you and all of your builders. There's a block of time where you're calling people and inviting them to get them in front of a presentation. Remember, you're not calling them and trying to sponsor them. You're calling them, you're texting them, you're to get them in front of an external source tool. The escape the rat race, the seed of prosperity video, uh, coming to uh, be the breakthrough presentation in your home, one-on-one uh, -on -one with the flip chart at Starbucks, uh, a hotel presentation. But Active recruiting is building that culture where everybody has that scheduled in their week, you know, in, in, in every week. All right. So you know how it is. We don't ever just talk to you. We want you to get into action and we give you assignments. And this module, there's only one because it's so important. You want to tell them what that is, Anne? Yes. <laughs> Okay, and you're going to want to write this down, guys, because it's really, I'm going to ask you to think about this in terms of details. And that is participating in or starting up 
a Be the Breakthrough presentation and leadership academies in your local market. Now, that may mean, you know, connecting into with other leaders who are already doing it and being part of that. So you want to find out, are there, you know, Be the Breakthrough presentations in your local market? If there isn't, well, guess what? You can plant the flag and be the first to do that. And you can start these. I mean, Randy and I agree, you can start them in your home. You can have a Be the Breakthrough presentation in your home, okay? And do a beautiful job of uh, inviting people over. Uh, bring your sponsor over. If the sponsor is local, or you could have the sponsor come in over the Zoom. I mean, there's so many wonderful ways that you could work it together with your sponsor. But the idea is, is that you want to set the date, okay? You want to have it in the schedule for yourself. And then you want to also have a leadership academy as the ultimate goal for you, either participating in one or starting one up. Now, we say that we want to start a global, okay, RAIN 2.0 B2B and a leadership academy calendar for around the world. So that if you had somebody in another market, then you could look it up, okay, and be able to send people to that event. Well, the same thing is you, if you have one going on, you want to be able to post that and uh, let other people know about it and promote it. Because I'll tell you why, guys, having other people come to those events, you know, will help if you're doing it in a, a, a venue like a hotel or you're, you're a meeting space where you're paying for it. It'll help to defray some costs. And also it, it creates this collaboration, okay, and working together with other leaders in the area is also a collaborative effort. And I love that about what we do here in our profession, because then we can tap into all the skills available to us in the group or the team that puts these events on together. And we all learn. I mean, it's like, I, I call it a master class in, <laughs> in working together with other people as well in that coordination. However, these are the kinds of information that we want, and we'll post this below the video today. We'll also send it out in the email that goes out that announces this, this presentation. Uh, but we, first of all, we want to know the event name. Okay, so is it a B2B or is it a leadership academy? The host name, okay, who's hosting it? So somebody like if I'm going to have an event over in a different country, I know who to be in contact with. The day and the time, okay, if it's Tuesday night, you know, at uh, eight o'clock, you write that down. The location, the physical location of it, if it's being, if it's all, if it's in a live, you know, in-person event, or if it's a Zoom event, okay, the Zoom link. The registration, if they have to register, or who they RSVP with. The language, okay, because in some cases it's going to be English, in other cases it's going to be a foreign language, and you want to know that ahead of time. So you put all this information together, okay, and you're going to send it over to events with an S at rain international, rain intl.com. And then the, the corporate team under Devin and the Lori are going to put together a calendar for all of us to be able to see around the world. And how cool will that be, Randy, if we have these events? showing up in all these different markets across the United States, into Canada, over to Europe, you know, over to Southeast Asia, in these different languages, I mean, eventually down to other countries as well. I'm telling you, that's when you'll see the momentum and the excitement explode, guys. Mm -hmm. So I hope you found this to be a very, very exciting and very useful module about creating recruiting momentum. We come back every first Monday of the month, okay? We have this posted in Rainmaker University in your back office and also on the Rain mobile app. So guys, hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead and a wonderful month ahead. Uh, let us know about those events and uh, we'll see you all next time at Rainmaker University. Have a great month, everyone. Bye for now. Peace.